A world of influence. Hillary Clinton is confirmed as our next Secretary of State, despite concerns about her husband. The missing engine from Miracle Flight 1549 is found in the Hudson River, while a second engine gives up telltale evidence. And just as rioters face fair hikes, a city transit official is charged with lining her own pockets. Live from Studio 7E in Rockefeller Center, this is News for New York. Good evening, everyone. Chuck is off tonight. Hillary Clinton will become an architect and an agent of U.S. foreign policy at a critical time for global affairs. Government affairs reporter Melissa Russo joins us with more on the New York senator's confirmation. Melissa? Sue and David, despite some short-lived efforts by Republicans to hold up her confirmation, the Senate has voted and Hillary Clinton's nomination was confirmed by an overwhelming margin of 94 to 2. Since then, that was about 4.30, she's been sworn in as the 67th Secretary of State, and she's resigned her Senate seat. The vote was originally supposed to take place yesterday, but Senator John Cornyn of Texas, who chairs the National Republican Senatorial Committee, cited some concerns about possible conflicts of interest involving donors to her husband's foundation. There were a couple of notable comments today. Democrat John Kerry, who chairs the Foreign Relations Committee, said, even he would have preferred if the disclosure about Clinton Foundation donations had taken place earlier. Hillary Clinton apparently agreed to some additional transparency, but then Kerry called it to a vote around 4 o'clock this afternoon. Nothing would give us more pleasure. We're prepared to vote now. Uh, we were prepared to vote yesterday. As I might add, Senator Luger was encouraging our moving by unanimous consent yesterday. So uh, we're a day overdue, and we're ready to proceed. Now, at one point during hours of debate, Senator John McCain said to his fellow Republicans, essentially, couldn't we just vote already and let Hillary Clinton get down to business? Because it was pretty clear she was going to be confirmed, and that's what happened. Finally, uh, Senator Clinton's office tells us that the judge who administered the oath of office to her was Kay Oberly, a childhood friend of Senator Clinton's. And her ceremony was private in her Russell Senate office with her husband and her entire Senate staff in her presence. We're told the Bible she used during the ceremony belonged to her late father. But Sue and David, she's no longer New York senator as of now. And Governor Patterson says by Saturday we'll have the name of whoever will succeed her. It's still a mystery at this she's point. She's now Madam Secretary. Madam Secretary. Yeah, all right. Okay. Okay. Got to get Thank used to that. Uh, okay. Thank you, Melissa. Well, at the same time that his Secretary of State was being confirmed, President Obama was wrapping up a busy first full day in office, issuing orders while moving between high-level meetings and a traditional open house at the executive mansion. Tim Minton recaps opening day in the life of number 44, Tim. And David, one confirmed, by the way, one held up. The Attorney General designate Eric Holder put on hold for at least a week. The day started today with 10 minutes of private time at the White House. Barack Obama reading what was waiting in his desk drawer. George Bush had left an envelope marked 244 from 43. And then Barack Obama started running the government his own way. President Obama gathered his senior staff to lay down new rules even before they were formally sworn in. Effective immediately, no gifts from lobbyists, period. White House staff who resigned can never return to lobby former Obama administration colleagues ever. The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. Then he informed the top staff that salaries over $100,000, most of those in this room, will be frozen. It came hours after Mr. Obama, still in his first 24 hours on the job, entered the Oval Office for the first time as president. He spoke briefly to his chief of staff before calling the leaders of Israel, Palestinian Authority, Jordan and Egypt, pledging active engagement in a Middle East peace process diverted again during closing weeks of the Bush administration. The president and first lady then participated in a service celebrated at the National Cathedral by clerics of many faiths. On Capitol Hill, Treasury Secretary-designate Tim Geithner endured a grilling about his failure to pay $34,000 in Social Security and Medicare taxes earlier in the decade, until he was audited and ultimately advised to pay last year by members of the Obama transition team. These were careless mistakes. Geithner's confirmation remains likely. As President Obama prepared to put promises into action with political pundits watching. He's got to score the points. He's got to get on the board. He stopped for a few minutes this afternoon to welcome ordinary Americans into his new home, a post-inauguration White House tradition 
dating back almost two centuries. Enjoy yourself, Rome, man. Don't break it. Those light moments were followed by serious attention to inherited crises, the financial meltdown in Iraq. President Obama met with economic advisors and then military leaders. In a hectic day, he also announced that officials who want to turn down requests for public information now have to consult first with White House lawyers and the Attorney General. Sue. All right, uh, thank you, Tim. A Long Island mother arrested after a teenager was rushed from the woman's home to the hospital. The 15-year-old girl was treated for alcohol poisoning late Saturday night. Police say she got sick during a party at 53-year-old Claire Goode's house. Goode is now charged with endangering the welfare of a child. Police say she served alcohol to several teens who were at her house, and she could be arraigned next month. So it appears the cash-strapped MTA may have lost even more money than the agency thought, this time because of an alleged scam by one of its own employees. Tonight, the MTA and the Brooklyn District Attorney are investigating a possible kickback scheme. John Noel reports. People who live on this stretch of East 46th Street in the Flatland section of Brooklyn and who know the woman who lives in this house say they can't believe what they're hearing, that the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office is now investigating whether 50-year-old Jacqueline Jackson has been running a kickback scheme at the New York City Transit Authority. Well, it's hard for me to believe that because the type of person she is, she is very friendly, you know, easy to talk to. You know? So it's kind of hard for me to believe it, honestly. Jackson is the director of legal support for the tort division of New York City Transit, the division that handles lawsuits from riders claiming injury. The MTA's inspector general initiated the investigation into whether Jackson inflated bills from a company doing business with the tort division and then pocketed the difference, reportedly using the money to buy luxury cars, furs, and flat screen televisions. Yesterday, detectives with the DA's office raided Jackson's home and the office of AJI Record Retrieval, hauling away boxes of documents. We are a huge organization. Uh, we have 70,000 people. It's an $11 billion budget. Uh, you know, every so often you will have a uh, bad apple, uh, somebody who uh, breaks the law. Uh, I'm glad that uh, our inspector general uh, was on top of it, got it. And uh, again, there's a presumption of, in presumption of innocence with this individual, but we will pursue this uh, vigorously. Jackson has worked for New York City Transit since 1986. Right now, she's been suspended without pay, but has not been charged with a crime. And that was John Noel reporting. And by the way, the public is getting another chance to sound off about the proposed fare hikes. A hearing is being held right now in the grand ballroom of the Garden City Hotel. The MTA is scheduled to hold another five hearings by the first week of February. Wall Street was back in a money-making mood. The Dow followed yesterday's triple-digit loss with a 279-point gain. And the Nasdaq index was up 66 points. CNBC's Margaret Brennan is on board to tell us what was behind the sudden turnaround. Margaret? Well, Sue, it was financial stocks that helped the market bounce back and helped erase most of yesterday's gains. And that came as traders kept one ear tuned to Treasury Secretary nominee Tim Geithner's testimony to the Senate today. He said that a new Obama administration bank rescue package will be unveiled in the next few weeks. That helped up financial stocks, which were rallying as the CEOs of Bank of America and Citigroup purchased massive shares of stock in their own bank in an effort to shore up confidence. Citigroup shares surged 31 percent. Bank of America also up double digits. And those gains came despite word that home builder confidence fell to a record, record low in January. Sentiment was worst in the West, here in the Northeast and in the South. It was among the most optimistic. But builders are urging Congress now to subsidize mortgage rates and create a tax credit to get people out there at buying homes. Today, it became official. American auto giant General Motors lost its spot as the world's number one automaker by sales to Japan's Toyota after GM reported an 11 percent sales decline. So GM shares sold off most of the day. They did eke out a three cent gain by the close of the session. But all that uh, couldn't compete with financial stocks, which were just traders were feeling optimistic about them today. And that's what helped us with that triple digit gain on the Dow Sue. All right, Margaret, thank you. Still ahead tonight is six more people in the tri-state area are looking for jobs, and we've got the numbers to prove it. Fired over a Facebook posting, what one man wrote that forced his boss to take action. Plus, the inaugural balls may have been in Washington, but it was all about New York style. We'll explain. Well, we're expected to climb out of the deep freeze in the next 24 hours. I'll let you know just exactly how warm it's going to get. Coming up next. 
let's go light a couple of It's a value as big as Atlantis. The Atlantis Super Sunscape. Four nights for the price of three. Kids stay and play free. This great package also includes our amazing dolphins, but only for a limited time. Call 1-800-ATLANTIS for the Atlantis Super Sunscape. Four nights for the price of three from $4.99. Book by January 31st. Atlantis. All over America, children in foster care dream of having a family to call their own. While for many families, the dream is to share their lives with a child. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Happy anniversary, Mom and Dad. Wednesday's Child, making dreams come true. I'm for New York meteorologist Janice Huff. Join me for Wednesday's Child every Wednesday and Sunday on 4 New York. We've seen a lot of change over the years, but one thing that hasn't changed is the durability of a Honda. Over the past 20 years, Honda has a higher percentage of cars and trucks still on the road, higher than any other car manufacturer in its class. Maybe that's one reason the CRV is the best selling crossover in America. Honda. Simple. Lease a 2009 Honda CRV for $239 a month for well qualified customers. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Optimum delivers so much. It would be a shame to keep it all to yourself. Shareability. There's only one place to get it. You're Optimum or you're not. Tonight at 11, you have the right to rave, rant, and rate your local police. Ida Siegel reports on a controversial website where citizens sound off on officers by name. See if your local force makes the grade. Tonight at 11 on 4 New York. Two guilty pleas tonight from NYPD officers accused of assaulting, then abandoning a teenager on Staten Island. The officers pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct after being charged with handcuffing a 14-year-old boy for throwing eggs at cars on Halloween in 2007. Investigators say officers Thomas Eliason and Richard Denise then dropped the boy off on a desolated marsh and left him to find his way home dressed only in his underwear. The officers will not serve jail time. A public employee in Paramus has been suspended for posting racist comments about Martin Luther King Jr. on his Facebook page. Chris Petranzio was suspended without pay from his job at the Shade Tree and Parks Commission. On Martin Luther King Day, Petranzio posted the comment, Happy James Earl Ray Day, on his Facebook page. James Earl Ray, as you probably know, shot and killed Martin Luther King in 1968. Brian Thompson will have the full story at 7, including reaction from the man's employer tonight on New York Nightly News. New Jersey's unemployment rate has jumped to its highest point in nearly 15 years. The Garden State jobless rate rose to 7.1% in December. More than 15,000 jobs were lost. The increase was a full percentage point from November. Professional and business services were the hardest hit industry. Well, coming up, the most popular pre-bred dog in America. Plus, lost then found what a cab driver discovered in his car that helped newlyweds who got off to a bad start. And First Lady Fashions hear from all the local designers who helped Michelle Obama shine on Inauguration Day. Tim's Tea with Tom, the first inauguration reaction from overseas, Tom Cruise in London. Then, first lady party fashion. We reveal Michelle Obama's stunning fashion for the inaugural bashes. Next Texas Hollywood. Tonight at 7.30 on 4 New York. Play and take five, huh? Who are you? I'm a little bit of luck. And when you play take five, the odds are one in nine. So I'm all you need to win. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Whoa, slow down, buddy. Play take five from the New York Lottery. All you need is a little bit of luck. There's more to Park City, Utah than the world-famous slopes of the canyons, Park City Mountain, and Deer Valley Resorts. Our over 100 restaurants and bars, eclectic shops and galleries, and hundreds of lodging options, for example. For hot deals, visit parkcityinfo.com. You've worked hard all your life. Then you get diagnosed with mesothelioma or lung cancer. What do you do? You first get the best medical care possible. 
You then call the number on your screen to receive the definitive source book on asbestos disease and your rights for compensation, even if you are a smoker. Since occupational exposure to asbestos increases your risk for getting lung cancer up to 100 times. Acknowledge national leaders in asbestos litigation. The law firm of Weitz and Luxembourg prepared this valuable booklet. We are here to help. You won't need this or this or one of these. Tonight, try something new instead. Bird's Eye Steam Fresh Meals for Two. Let your delicious dinner cook itself perfectly in just 10 minutes. Tender pieces of chicken or shrimp, colorful vegetables, and pasta in tempting sauces. Ready in no time, without even washing a skillet. Now there's a new idea. Steam Fresh Meals for Two from Bird's Eye. President Barack Obama. What challenges does he face on his first full day in office? Tonight on NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. The government mandated switch to digital broadcasting is coming February 17th. And that means if you get your TV signal through a TV antenna or apartment building antenna, your service could be interrupted. Millions of Americans will lose their TV service February 17th. Don't be one of them. Learn about a special low-cost program from Cablevision that will enable you to get IOTV, keep all your current channels, plus get a whole lot more. Act now to learn about Cablevision's low-cost program. Call 1-866-707-7907. Even if you've resisted the move to cable in the past, please call. Discover how to make the switch from your old antenna with no hassles, no surprises. Learn how IOTV will make your TV even better. It's January and time is running out. Don't wait till February 17th to discover your TV won't work. Call 1-866-707-7907 and learn how IOTV from Cablevision is your best way to transition to digital TV. What could be another critical clue into what caused U.S. Airways Flight 1549 to splash down in the Hudson was discovered today. Divers found the missing engine on the floor of the Hudson earlier today. They will not attempt to retrieve it until at least tomorrow. The NTSB also says it has found the remains of what may be a bird in the engine that's still connected to the jet. A happy ending tonight for some newlyweds who accidentally left their wedding gifts in a taxi cab. We first showed you the picture of new bride Christine Herrick Fitzhenry yesterday as she was getting out of the taxi. The new couple left the wedding box full of cash and gifts in the trunk following uh, the reception Saturday night. But after a three-day search, turns out the cab driver, uh, Nusrat Rashid, had already returned the box of wedding cash and, and uh, gifts. And those gifts will be waiting for the couple at their apartment when they return from their honeymoon. When I finish, I... It was the first sketch that he put down on paper. And it turns out his was the gown that First Lady Michelle Obama chose to wear to the inaugural balls. Pat Battle introduces us to the young designer who is quickly waltzing into history. This nondescript storefront on the fringes of Manhattan's Garment District is now the hot fashion address, courtesy of this dress, the ivory silk chiffon gown created by 26-year-old fashion designer Jason Wu. He didn't know Michelle Obama was wearing his dress until the rest of us did. She stepped out and I go, wait a minute, I think that's my, wait, it's mine, oh, wow. And then I jumped up and down for an hour. The first lady's inauguration day attire was the talk at water coolers all over the city. We've been debating in the office about it. I thought she looked beautiful. Some people thought she looked older than she should, um, especially with the um, swearing in dress. Um, I thought it was quite appropriate. It's different than what I've seen other first ladies do before. I think Obama looked great as usual. His uh, speeches were quite elaborate and nice. Um, I think Michelle Obama should stick to the classics more like Ralph Lauren and Oscar de la Renta and stop trying to reinvent the fashion wheel. Others say she lit up Washington, D.C. in that two-piece brocade suit by New York's own Isabel Toledo. I loved it. Michelle Obama, she dressed very well. First daughter Sasha and Malia's bright colored custom made coats were also made by J. Crew. That's where Mrs. Obama, by the way, got those green leather gloves and her kids' inaugural celebration outfit. I think it makes them feel very approachable. I think people connect to them through what they wear and the idea that someone could buy a sweater from us and it's the same sweater that the First Lady might have had, like, that's pretty amazing and that doesn't happen every day. And this will go down in history as one of the chicest First Ladies ever. And the next time you see this dress, it'll be hanging in the Smithsonian. Pat Battle News 4, New York. 
Our coverage of all the glitz and glamour of the inauguration balls, including more on the First Lady's style, continues on our website, NBCNewYork.com. Log on to see video of the parties as well as a slideshow of Michelle Obama's fashion do's and don'ts. Well, Janice has got the weather do's and don'ts. We're getting a little warm weather for, briefly. Well, we may not have to wear as many layers over the next couple of days, Sue. That'll be a nice break for all of us, but it does not last long. By the weekend, the cold air is back. I'll tell you more coming up. First, we've got this weather video to talk about. A frozen river in West Islip, Long Island. Uh, the temperatures around the area have been uh, well below freezing the last uh, couple of weeks, and so you're going to find lots of ice on rivers and ponds around the area, but be careful. Don't venture out too far. As the temperatures warm up the next several days, there are going to be some thin spots. Don't get caught in a bad situation. We'd love to see your pictures and videos. Send them to IC at NBCNewYork.com. Well, our weather is uh, pretty cool out there tonight again. It's 26 degrees right now. It's going to drop down into the low 20s to around 20 tonight. Some teens, not as cold as last night. The slow warming trend begins tonight. Temperatures right now are in the 20s in the North Sea and uh, New Haven's at 25 degrees. Wind chills are in the teens in Oakdale and Stanford and in the single digits in Monticello and Mount Pocono tonight. So plenty cold enough across the area. Uh, in terms of weather itself, other than the cold, it's very quiet across the Great Lakes in the Northeast. Some lake effect snows continue just north of Rochester tonight. Otherwise, not a whole lot to speak of, except the brief January thaw that hits us late tomorrow and into Friday when we'll be in the 40s. But right back comes the cold on the weekend, especially on Sunday as the temperatures drop to the teens and 20s again. So for tonight, a few passing clouds, but not as cold, 22, still chilly though. And in the morning, we're at 25 with a mix of sun and clouds. The afternoon though, uh, does bring slightly milder weather for now. At least this is near average, 36, 37 for a high temperature. Friday, we jump another 10 degrees into the 40s. Be nice if it would stick around for the weekend, but no, we're back to the 30s on Saturday. And Sunday, a high of 25 with lows in the teens. Now the weather pattern stays relatively quiet, a few flurries coming Coming up on Monday and then Wednesday we're going to get some snow there's a chance of snow in the forecast with high temperatures in the 30s and lows in the 20s so still too early to really discern whether or not there's going to be a major storm of course got seven days to go and you can get more weather information by watching the weather channel on cable well, I would say that um, this is good news, and uh, I forgot what I was going to say to you. Well, that's okay. That's well, good news. It's good yeah. news. That's it's good, good news. Enough. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I don't know why. I've never had that to happen to me. Yeah, that's right. Blanco. All righty. Manhattan, well, let me, <laughs> let me fill the void. Manhattan went to the dogs today. The top dogs, in fact, and Italian's in America's most popular purebred dog is the Labrador Retriever, followed by one of Sue's favorites, the Yorkshire Terrier. German Shepherd is third. Fourth is the Golden Retriever, and number five is the good old Beagle. This according to the American Kennel Club, which has been tracking dogs for 125 years. Most of all, dogs today are our companions. They ground us in nature in our busy and increasingly technological world. Our dogs, sort of a look of then and now, have gone from sleeping in the barnyard to sleeping in our beds. All right. Also at the festivities today, the Pointer, which was one of the top breeds in 1884 when the Kennel Club first started. Ellen Berman is up next. Well, thank you, Sue. Coming up in sports, Rex Ryan takes over and he serves notice the Jets will be a tough out. We will hear from management and the players, but what about Favre? Next in sports on News 4 New York at 6. Coming up tonight from Washington, for two years he talked about what he'd do on day one in office. Well, this was day one in the Oval Office for Barack Obama. I'm Michael Gargiulo. I'm Darlene Rodriguez. Tomorrow on Today in New York, the secrets of a super saver. Meet a man who's made it his mission to save money and learn a few tricks on how to keep from spending your own cash. This weather traffic on the floors 5 to 7 a.m. Closed captioning provided by Toyota, a smart way to keep moving forward. There's more to Park City, Utah than the world-famous slopes of the canyons, Park City Mountain, and Deer Valley Resorts. Our over 100 restaurants and bars, eclectic shops and galleries, and hundreds of lodging options, for example. For hot deals, visit parkcityinfo.com. Sometimes you can hear lung cancer in smokers before you see it. There's a whistling noise. It's the air racing around the lung cancer that's almost completely blocking an airway. 
By the time most lung cancers are discovered, it's already too late to operate. Are you still getting your TV through an antenna? If you don't upgrade to digital by February 2009, you may have a rude awakening. Why wait till then? Call 1-888-DTV-2009 and find out more. The key that unlocks the greatest secrets of our time. NBC Sunday. One ancient treasure could change the world as we know it. Academy Award winner Mira Sorvino. We're fighting a war here. Who else is after this? But some secrets were never meant to be uncovered. I am the last Templar! The NBC movie event, The Last Templar, Sunday, 9, 8 central on NBC. Herbal Essences brings you another great escape. Hydralicious. A whole new discovery. New Hydralicious from Herbal Essences. Swirls of heavenly shampoo. So creamy. And a new targeted conditioner for lusciously hydrated hair. New Herbal Essences Hydralicious in three hydrating formulas. The girl's gotta have options. Fantasies may vary. Luscious hair guaranteed. Fios guy, what have you got there? Oh, uh, just an award from J.D. Power and Associates. Verizon Fios TV ranked highest in overall customer satisfaction. What you got? Kung Pao chicken. Ah. It's Chinese it's chicken from China. It's a delicacy. With over 100 HD channels, Verizon Fios ranked highest in overall customer satisfaction by J.D. Power and Associates. This is Fios. This is big. Verizon Fios Sports Desk, brought to you by Verizon Fios, the most amazing TV picture and the fastest internet, period. So I wonder who's going to be more outgoing, the, the new coach or, her, uh, or Herm Edwards? Well, I mean, well, sure. Now, Herm, uh, you know, Jets news conferences with Herm Edwards and before that uh, used to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Last three years were a little boring. Yeah. Uh, Rex Ryan making a very strong first impression today, primarily talking about defense because that's his specialty. How's this for a line? If you take a swipe at one of ours, we'll take a swipe at two of yours. All right. He was a complete about face from Eric Mangini as he was introduced at the Jets facility in Florham Park. He oozed confidence and personality. A Jets news conference promises to be an event again in the mold of Bill Parcells and Herm Edwards. Here's a sampling. No, I'm going to be myself, and that's been pretty successful for me throughout my career. I'm, I'm not going to, paint, you know, paint a false picture of myself. You know, I, I'm a guy that's very confident. The only way I know how to handle a challenge, that's to hit that thing head on, and that's what we're going to do. We can win immediately. There's no reason we shouldn't win immediately. With the kind of players we have, the kind of coaching staff that we're bringing in here, we want to win multiple Super Bowls. We'll start with the first one, but then we're going to move on from there. Uh, they've been to the Super Bowl once, 40 years ago. Is it any wonder why his players love him? Bruce Beck reports. Rex Ryan says he's dreamed of coaching the Jets. The Woody Johnson says Rex is the right man for the job. The Jet players offered their first impressions of their new boss. I think it's great. I mean, he's... Uh... You know, he's aggressive, man, and he speaks his mind. You know, I, I know that's a, you know, a welcome change right here. A great guy. Um, he's very confident, but he's humble uh, in, in certain ways. So um, it's good. Do you like the concept of him saying everything is about being aggressive offensively and defensively? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be our identity, you know. So right now, if everyone was watching on the team, you know, we, we got to have our identity today, and now it's time to go get it done. Rex Ryan talked about being aggressive and physical, and the players embraced that philosophy. The question is, how quickly will that translate to wins? In Florham Park, I'm Bruce Beck, News 4 New York. So what about Brett Favre? Will he return as quarterback, and does Rex Ryan want him to? I know the kind of talent he has. 
uh, you know, the kind of competitor he is. And I would think anybody would want him as their quarterback. Plan on talking to all the players. You know, so um, I'm excited about getting to you know all our players, and, and you know I'll start taking, knocking off about four or five a day, and when it gets down to the yes, I'll, I'll talk to Brett. A way to just talk to him down. And that's not how it really should work. I mean, obviously, Brett Favre should get the first call, so he didn't exactly jump up and down demanding Favre's return. By the same token, he's not going to kick out a Hall of Fame quarterback. Just about everybody's in action tonight, including the Knicks, trying to build on their King Holiday win over the Bulls on Monday. They were back at practice yesterday, gearing up to host Mike D'Antoni's former team, the Phoenix Suns, tonight. Despite the connection, the Knicks say their focus is on just getting another win. You know, obviously there's some guys out there you have a lot of feelings for, but uh, uh, it's more about us trying to win. I'm sure, you know, Coach wants to win really bad just like all the rest of us do, and but it's just another game, and it's going to matter a lot, you know, a lot more to us that we get the victory, not that you know, Coach used to coach there. All right, we'll have some highlights at 11. By the way, here's how Rex Ryan opened his news conference this morning. First off, uh, with all the cameras and all that, I was looking for our new president back there, but, uh, you know, I think we'll get to meet him uh, the next couple of years anyway, so hey. we'll find out. That's right. That would be if they win the Super Bowl, they go to the White House and meet the president. So, so it's 40 years ago, huh? That yeah, Super Bowl one. three, and now we're on 43. <laughs> like that. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I yeah, always say that. That's what I like to say. All right. Uh, where are we? Next on NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Adding years to your life, what's being credited with helping Americans live longer? That's all for this edition of News for New York at 6. I'll see you at 7. We'll see you at 11. Good night.